Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. It's getting dark out, so I'm gonna get this video going. It's gonna be a really cool show today. We're gonna to talk about a miracle today, total miracle of life. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, so it's gonna be different today. There's not gonna to be any Sasquatch photographs and stuff. It's just gonna be about a wonderful, incredible miracle that's going on in the world right now that immensely applies to the Sasquatch discovery. So let's get into it, stay tuned. I've taken out dozens of wildlife officers, PhDs, and had them live interact with Sasquatch on multiple occasions. Trained in the art of tracking by a Cree Nation's elder and a military sniper, my skill sets include camouflage techniques using the terrain and its features to mask ground movement, counter surveillance, survival, evasion, and escape techniques. So I guess this is a lot, a question from the cooperation. Um, and this, all, this is all gonna tie in together to do with uh, animal communication. I've been trying to work with and had a lot of success working with some animal communicators. It's gone really well. And what, what I want to talk about today is, so what happened is a, <clears throat> a person from my cooperation calls me and tells me that they're having all this Sasquatch interaction. They're seeing Sasquatch around their two homes, her and the neighbor, and uh, <clears throat> wants me to come out and have a look. And even the guy next door is really concerned about all the Sasquatch interactions. So, you know, they want my advice and he's He's negatively concerned. He thinks it's a bad thing. He thinks Sasquatch are bad. And uh, so anyways, I go out and uh, I meet with the lady next door. She's telling me how she saw a Sasquatch like walk up to the window of one of the rooms in the house next door. So mind boggling. And even maybe there's some fingerprints from a Sasquatch on the glass, which I saw something, you know, smudges that were interesting. So this is very interesting to me. So the dad comes out, takes me around, shows me the backyard and there are Sasquatch tracks everywhere. But what I'm seeing <clears throat> as I'm looking around is a lot of stuff that's blowing my mind. He's not a tracker. He's out there talking about how he thinks animals are just stupid and very uh, annoying. He doesn't have a good perspective of wild animals, the deer, the bears, everything. He thinks poorly of animals. He think, And I don't think that way at all. I think animals are brilliant and amazing and intelligent and incredible survivalists. So we're not really meshing very well with our chemistry. So, and I'm not telling him a lot of what I'm seeing, but eventually I tell him, I ask him, <clears throat> who's the smaller track? Looks like a, a woman, a little heavy, walks really flat, kind of walks strangely. He goes, oh, that's my daughter. I go, oh, it's your daughter who's been out here. Cause I see almost none of his tracks and I'm seeing stuff out there. I'm telling you what I was seeing out there. And I'll, I'll tell you this preemptively. I'm seeing someone that was gifting Sasquatch the way I gift Sasquatch with apples up on a tree. I saw someone who was putting apples up with a ladder for God's sake. And I could see the ladder that was over by the house. She, this, this girl was taking the ladder, walking over the trees, putting the apples up high. I'm also seeing that this hasn't been done for a couple months. It hasn't been happening for a couple months. I'm seeing the Sasquatch close to her and stuff going on like crazy. But I'm also seeing the third thing I have to tell you is I saw a black bear had come along and taken some of the apples, not all of them, and it looks like in the trackway, he was chased off by Sasquatch. And I, this is all gonna come together for you in a second. I know it sounds, it's a lot, but this is what I'm seeing in the trackways. This, the, the ground is very clear to me. Uh, it's lots of sphagnum moss. I'm seeing lots of these obvious tracks. I mean, I'm seeing this black bear getting chased up the side of the hill for, I, I couldn't even follow the tracks that were so far. I followed them for like 500 yards and was like, okay, clearly this Sasquatch is chasing off the bear. The bear's running for his life protecting his apples or whatever. So I go in the house, I ask to meet with the daughter and uh, the guy says, okay, you, my daughter knows you. She's gonna get a little starstruck. And I go, really, how does she know me? Oh, she's watched all your stuff. Really, she's a fan. Really, that doesn't surprise me at all. She's doing stuff. I did on Survivor Man, I do on my documentary. So I meet her. She's a little nice Down syndrome girl. She's in her 20s, I don't know her exact age sweetheart and she has down syndrome so she's mentally handicapped beautiful beautiful girl just immediately she got teary-eyed when she met me because i was uh, she called me sasquatch man which i'm not but uh, please don't call me that but anyways i met her she's wonderful so i start asking her about what's going on what's and she's not she's kind of afraid to talk with her dad because her dad is not like her he's very like i said derogatory about animals so i start asking her what was going on <clears throat> and she starts telling me she was giving apples to the Sasquatch and they were coming around a lot. All these amazing things I could see in the trackway. But this is where the kicker comes in. 
This is incredible. This is what the miracle of today's video is all about. I asked her how, I asked her what happened with the bear. She goes, oh, I didn't see the bear. I go, okay, so, but why did the bear run away? And she went, Sasquatch chased them off. And I said, well, I thought you didn't see the bear. I didn't see the bear at all. I go, well, how could you have not seen the bear if the Sasquatch didn't chase him off? And she said, kind of strangely at me, he mind spoke it to me. And I go, when did he mind speak it to you? She goes, the day after it happened. I went out and I stopped putting the apples at pie because he told me I didn't have to. And I go, how did he tell me you didn't have to? He just told me to put it on the big rock over there. How did the Sasquatch tell you this? And she says it again, touches her head. She, he mind spoke to me. And then I asked her, and her, the dad at this point is getting upset. He's not happy about this. He feels very uncomfortable about this conversation. You can see it in his eyes. And the final thing she says to me is, before the dad stops the conversation and is really pissed off, is that uh, uh, the Sasquatch had, she said she had a vision of what he had seen had happened. And at that point, the dad got pissy at me and uh, ended the conversation and I haven't spoken to this wonderful wonderful young Down syndrome girl since which was apparently she doesn't have email access and stuff the neighbor who's part of my cooperation talks to her but <clears throat> oh no so, so now remember I work with a lot of PhDs I work with a lot of uh, high-end people professors and stuff they don't like this paranormal stuff and you know what that's too bad because there's a lady that's coming in the video after you I'm sorry it's getting dark out Anna Bachman I think that's how you pronounce her name She's an animal communicator, <coughs> and she mind speaks with animals. Please watch this next 17 minutes with her. I am going out into the field with people that are colleagues of hers. I'm trying to connect with her because she is an absolute miracle in what she does. I believe there's, as you'll see in this video after, this segment I'm playing after, how this is a big deal animal communicators and mind speaking with animals is a really really big deal and it's a miracle that it's transpiring I've been trying to do this I've been trying to work with people about this for over a decade and uh, I don't do it very well myself to be honest I've had moments where I've talked about that before and I'll talk about it more later I've had moments where it seemed like that was happening where they were mind speaking with me even I'll tell you that story real quick when after I filmed video two um, and before I filmed video three, when I was out in the wilderness with two people, um, we were in a tent and it was really, it was pitch black, so black, I couldn't tell if my eyes were open or closed because it was just so, so black outside. And I was kind of half asleep, felt like I was in a bit of a dream state. And I felt like something was moving towards the tent. I could feel it like in my, and I, again, I couldn't tell if I was sleeping or awake. I couldn't tell if my eyes were open or closed. It was, it was weird. And what I saw in my head, since all, all I could see visually was black, as I saw the outside of the tent that was blue, and I saw a hand, a Sasquatch hand, moving towards the tent. And I felt in my heart like something was excited to feel the tent, if that makes sense. I felt like an excitement to touch it. And again, I wasn't sure if I was dreaming or awake and what was going on until audio-wise, auditory, through my ears, through sound, I saw, I saw the hand reach and touch the tent, and I heard it go... At that point, I kicked those two jerks that were sleeping beside me, and we got up, and then a whole bunch of other amazing things happened. But that was one of the moments I've had where I felt like they mind spoke to me. And now this was a mind spoke, mind speaking that was live. I didn't get to talk to that wonderful Down syndrome girl. If it was a live mind speak or if she was feeling a memory, it was very interesting to me. I wanted to talk to her more about it. I never have been able to, but. Maybe you've had experiences like that. Maybe there are more people. Maybe there are people that do this really well. Because you have to understand, this is not paranormal anymore. They study these, these uh, ESP things in universities. They study it in, in psychology. This is real. This is really happening. You better do some research if you think this stuff is garbage now, because it's not. I had it in my old textbooks from 1999 in my university psychology textbook. The ESP, extrasensory perception, is real. It's legit. It happens. And now when you, that opens up a Pandora's box, doesn't it? Because how good is your ESP? How excellent can you mind speak? Can you see into people's memories? And I believe this is an intricate part of the discovery process for Sasquatch. So <coughs> thanks so much for listening. Please watch this, this, this video that follows. It's so important. It's a miracle. This discovery of Sasquatch is a miracle. 
and the discovery of this knowledge and this information, it's all over the place. People are learning this. Watch this woman's video. She is an amazing, incredible genius, and I'm very excited to work with her or and her colleagues or students in the discovery process of Sasquatch. It'll move this discovery forward light years, and you'll find out why next when you watch this video. Enjoy, and I'll see you next week. After everything that I've experienced with um, Anna and, and sp spending all that time with her, there's a that scientific control, you know, sort of rational part of my brain still has doubts. So I wonder what it will take to totally convince me. And then a unique opportunity presented itself. In the course of my work, I had come across the story of Jörg Olsen an ex-policeman turned conservationist. Jörg and his wife Karen set up the Jukani Predator Park. Here, many big cats rescued from bad zoos and canned hunting farms are offered a home and get lifetime care. Jörg has a remarkable relationship with his cats and he handles them in a way I have seldom seen before. did not know what to do with. This black leopard, called Diablo, had been rescued from a European zoo where he'd been abused. That experience had made him suspicious and vicious. All he did was sit in his night shelter and snarl at anyone who came close to him. Six months in, and Yerk was at a loss as to how to deal with this cat. That whole atmosphere there, there was a vibe of aggression and of um, I hate you and I will kill you. And, you know, the one encounter I had with him, um, he sent me to hospital one bite, one week. Here, I thought, was the perfect case. If Anna could get this animal to change his behavior and become well-adjusted, then I would have no choice but to acknowledge that she was in dialogue with animals. It took me some time, however, to convince Jörg to bring in Anna. He's a dangerous cat. He's very, very dangerous. Um, he's towards me and towards everybody else. In my opinion, the chances of an animal communicator changing that, um, it'll take a lot to convince me. Um, I honestly do not believe that an animal can talk to a human or communicate with a human. Um, I've had animals my whole life. Um, we give them commands, we give them instructions, and they do it as we habituate them, basically. Um, but I, I'm very skeptical to think that an animal like Diablo will communicate or can communicate with humans. Um, I am desperate, however. I do not want to lose him. I made sure that Anna had no information on Diablo or his history before she came to speak to the Black Leopard. I was nervous to see what would happen as this animal never let anyone near his night shelter without a lot of snarling and growling. But the minute he saw Anna, he calmed down and let her kneel right outside and look at him.
This beautiful black leopard that you've asked us to communicate with is very overawed by his new surroundings, having come from a very uh, cramped and stressful place for him. But this place has been provided for him, but he's been quite conditioned by a very unfortunate past. Um, he doesn't want much to do with humans as a result. He's immensely powerful, and I mean not just physically, which you well know and respect, but he's immensely powerful with uh, a wisdom and an energetic presence and personality that is far bigger than anyone has ever appreciated about him before. And he commands a certain amount of respect for that. Again, not in a needy way, but really just out of, um, by virtue of who he is as a being. There's a very particular thing about his name, uh, Diablo. He wants that name changed because he doesn't like the associations with it, the blackness, the darkness, the diabolical. And when asking him about his past before coming here, he shows concern for two young cubs that were next to him. He's asking what happened to them with a great sense of, of care and concern. We actually forgot about that. When we went to fetch him, there was so much excitement about bringing him back here. Um, it actually slipped my mind until she said, um, he asked about the two cubs. And then we have remembered there were two little young leopard cubs next door to him that came from Rustenburg and they were sort of semi-wild, they weren't hand yet and it just slipped my mind and when they talked about it I couldn't believe, I, I actually did believe it, I mean then I really believed that they were communicating. I mean she communicated with him and when we spoke to her and she relayed all the information back to us, firstly I didn't believe her, you know what, uh, you know it's things that anybody can think out and you can think you know and then she said something about the cubs that was with him, that were with him. Um, and that changed this whole thing because now all of a sudden, you know, that's something that she didn't know about. And I've also reassured him that you have no demands of him here, that you're quite happy to um, not make any physical demands of him or any expectations for display or interaction, that you're really willing to let him be how he wants to be. And that's given him an enormous sense of relief. Yeah. And having told him that has for the first time made him actually, um, actually genuinely interested in now exploring a bit further. Now that he feels that he's not being asked to come out more, he's genuinely interested in being relaxed enough to have a natural curiosity come out and to actually expand his horizons a bit. And Yeh was just stunned when the black leopard walked out of his night shelter into the larger enclosure later in the afternoon. In the six months that the cat had been here, Yeh had never seen him out of the night shelter. He then decided to rename the leopard Spirit. We told him that same afternoon that we're not going to call him Diablo anymore um, and we understand and we agree with that the diabolical side of it that's not what he is to us um, and we'd like to change his name to Spirit. As I walked to him I thought listen he asked about the two young leopards and I thought well I'm here now there's nobody else here I'm not going to look like a fool if something if I if he ignores me um, I'll tell him what what happened to those leopards and I told and as I called him and I said Spirit and he was looking at me he was lying like that I said, with regard to the two little leopards, I just want to assure you and I want to tell you that they're safe. And I couldn't help it. I just said to him, wow, you're beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, that's moy. That's moy. And he gave me that, oh. And I thought, what's happening here? And I said to him, you understand what I'm telling you if I say to you that you're the most stunning cat? Oh. And I spoke to him and he answered me about 19 times. And he just sat there and he was totally relaxed. Um, it's the first time, it's the first time since we had him that I felt at ease with him. I felt that he was relaxed and he understood me. It was, to say that, I don't know what it feels like for him. For me, it was the most amazing moment. Later that afternoon, 
Anna came back to check up on Spirit and to see how he was doing. I'm asking him now about how he experienced the communication from Jochen through the fence. And he said it's the first time that someone has directly expressed to him verbally um, appreciation for who he really is, not how they see him to be. And that really surprised him. <laughs> he shows me an image of literally stopping in his tracks by surprise at that sense of just this wall of appreciation coming towards him. He is so relieved that nothing's being demanded of him here. He's just so relieved. It's like this weight is lifted from his shoulders. <laughs> and when he was grunting back, he said he was saying thank you for the thank yous. So for each thank you he was getting, he was saying thank you back. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say about that feedback? I think I'll talk about it this a bit later. I can't believe It's two different animals. It's two totally, totally different personalities. We had a snarling cat, angry at everything, um, upset about being here, uh, hating humans, hating us for having him here, um, you know, ready to kill in an instant. To this relaxed, black leopard that's lying on top of his log in his shelter is this attitude of you, you recognize me for who I am now and it's amazing to to talk to him and get the talking and get him to talk back to us. Jach and Karen attended Anna's workshop on animal communication and now use it regularly with all their animals. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it changed my whole life um, and spirit and animal communication has taught me you know, when I work with, with my other lions, um, the reactions you get, the, the communication you get back, the feelings you get. Um, you know, you get, sometimes you get lions or queenie, for instance, that's unhappy with something that happened. And I'm not sitting out there wondering what's wrong with her. She tells me, and I can correct it, and I can make her happy, because she is in my, I have to look after her, I've got to make her happy.